Auditor, and I'm here for another episode of Odds and Ends. Uh, Odds and Ends is a program uh, sponsored by the Montgomery County Auditor's Office, and uh, every episode we get to introduce or meet uh, some uh, interesting people that are, are work in the community or doing good things in the community and we find out a little bit about them and we find out a little bit about what they do and uh, how it impacts the community and today I you can't have any no, no organization, well, besides the auditor's office, but no organization impacts the community more in a positive way than the Dayton Metro Library. And so we're so thrilled today to have uh, Debbie Ch Ch Chess, I'm pronouncing that correctly, right? Mm -hmm. Debbie yes, Chess, yes. Uh, who is the External Relations and Development Director at the Dayton Metro Library. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Debbie, for being here. Oh, thank you for the invitation. Are you, are you excited about being I, on Odds and Ends? I am very excited about being on Odds and Ends. <laughs> The name alone, odds and ends, right? <laughs> we get a lot of compliments about the name. It's kind of, so uh, clever. Yeah, well, I can't take credit for it, but I, but my staff came up with that. So it's years cool. ago, years ago, they came up with that. So uh, uh, of the staff members that aren't even with us anymore came that up with it. So, but it's, it's a great name. But yeah. anyway, you are the External Relations and Development Director I at am. Dayton Metro Library. So why don't we start out by saying or getting a little bit of information what is an external affairs relations director at the Dayton Metro Library? What is that? So I um, promote the library and the work that we do so that people don't have to ask what, <laughs> what, <laughs> what does it? the library do? <laughs> okay. Or, um, so I do a lot of public relations, um, marketing of the library, anything that you see with our logo on it, anytime you see us on the television, in print, um, online, it's because my department, um, my staff, has done their work to elevate the programs and um, work that the library does. So I manage all of that. I, I'm out in the community a lot, um, uh, cultivating relationships um, to support the library and vice versa that we support the work that's being done in the community. So I, uh, because the auditor's office has a kind of unique relationship with all the libraries in, mm -hmm. in the community because we, we distribute funds, uh, state funds come f through us. We're the we're the conduit that, that distributes public library funds. So we, we have a relationship with, with there are four library districts mm -hmm. in the in the county, but Dayton Metro covers most of the county. How many buildings, yes, how many we facilities? Have 17 facilities, and that doesn't include outreach services, which includes our bookmobile and, okay. and the folks that go out into the community for folks that can't make it into their local branch. Um, yeah. So it's pretty much most of the county is most covered. Most of the county. Uh, yeah. Like I said, there are, there are some other places, but uh, mm -hmm. that cover like, like uh, Oakwood and Centerville, yeah, Centerville. And Germantown. But Correct. beyond that, you have these 17 facilities, and they're all new facilities. Yes. Is that yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They are all, and they're beautiful, state of the art. And what I love about that is, you know, you roll, you come into any community that we are, and you see our buildings. Um, they're very unique. Very unique. Uh, they are modern looking. Very modern. modern looking. We get a lot of compliments. We've recently won uh, a very prestigious award from the Builders Exchange for um, the design of our buildings and for um, really um, supporting the community in our design and our facilities and, and employing local labor um, to build the the so, facilities. so how long have you been with the library? I've been with the library. It'll be a year in October. A year. So now, were you? What were you doing previous? Uh, so previously, I was with the Dayton Contemporary Dance Company. Okay. I right. was their director of um, strategic affairs. But prior to that, I was in Tucson, Arizona. Oh wow! Okay. And I ran the African American Cultural Center there and the Arts Foundation there. I've been away from this area for 32 years. But you're originally from this area? I'm originally from Fairborn. Okay. Yeah. And you then you spent 32 years in Tucson? No, I, I spent 32 years going everywhere. Everywhere. Doing okay. many things. Nice. Um, well, yeah, nice. I served in the Peace Corps. Oh my. Um, oh my. Oh, we have got a very broad background. Very then. broad background. So, uh, so what brought you back to Dayton then? Um, actually family. Okay. Um, and really wanting to, um, in, in the next phase of my career, mm -hmm. uh, really wanted to reconnect with, with family and, and, um, reconnect to my hometown. My Very home good. Area. Well, good. We're glad to have you. I, it We're is glad wonderful to, have you to back. be back. Yeah. It really is. And Dayton, um, you know, I have so many memories and as much as it, um, has changed, it hasn't changed in a lot of ways <laughs> and it's really wonderful. 
So did um, you gr- you grew up in Fairborn? Yeah, you, you I grew, went to school so there. My father retired at Wright Patterson right, Air, Air Force and, Base. Air, yes, okay. when I was in the fourth grade. Okay. So he decided to stay. Uh, went product of Fairborn City Schools okay. to Wright State University, and from there I went into the Peace Corps. How nice! Yeah, and, so, and then moved okay. to Chicago. Well, now that's fascinating, just in itself. That's fascinating. Mm-hmm. So, what did you do in the Peace Corps? Um, I was a youth and community development uh, specialist, and at the time, Hurricane Gilbert. So this was back in the 80s. Okay. Not to okay. date myself. Yeah, okay. <laughs> back in the 80s. And so a hurricane had hit the island. And I was responsible for doing a lot of health education, a lot of infrastructure rebuild around that. Mm-hmm. Well, how fascinating. Well, that's kind of a, a perfect place for a person to end up in the library, right? I think so. Yeah. I think so. And I also think that um, all of the experiences that I've had in the past, um, working in the arts, working in community, has really led me to my position at the library. Um, I have a master's in urban planning and policy. And um, one of the reasons I pursued that degree is because I really had an interest in how people um, live and and work in the built environment and how the built environment affects people and how people affect the built environment. Mm-hmm. And so um, that, that degree really um, kind of umbrellas what happens at the library because what's happening at the library now is um, it's where we will always be about books right Mm -hmm. Right, always Mm -hmm. be about books and 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 resources that way but we're becoming a hub um, of for community socialization Um, as more and more the uh, public resources are dwindling in terms of gathering spaces the library is really being that 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 resource we have um food distribution we do workforce development we do so much more than just you know people coming in to check out books and i think the experience that i've had in the past really um helps me um elevate that in the community helps people understand the role Mm -hmm. of the library in the in the larger workings of of dayton so it's been a wonderful alignment yeah i was going to say you know libraries have changed uh, so much uh in my lifetime Mm -hmm. you know uh, i mean i can recall going to the library and you know, having to learn the uh, Dewey Decimal System. Do they still use the Dewey Decimal System? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm dating myself now, right? <laughs> having to learn the Dewey Decimal System to find books and mm-hmm. uh, in the library. And, and so it's, the, the role of the library has changed so much. Yes. Um, as you mentioned, you know, the computer labs yes. and uh, just providing computers for, for a lot of people, uh, you know, it, points of time where there just weren't uh, those types of things weren't available or the internet wasn't available in certain areas of the city or whatever Absolutely. it is um it's become just like you said it's just a resource center mm-hmm. and people um some things that people don't know that the library provides is um we you can actually check out a laptop oh i did not know library. that i didn't know mm-hmm. that okay we have a green screen room where okay. you can go in and record um music record podcasts um things oh wow like this. yes wow. uh we also have access to um, Roku's and you know Roku mm-hmm. that you uh, you can check that out to stream um, content, screen, app, uh, screen Apple TV, Hulu, you know HBO, Disney Plus, those types of things. Um, we you can rent out our spaces in our new facilities. What you'll see is a lot of opportunity to um, have public sp- have space, either a quiet reading room or a meeting space. And it's all free, mm-hmm. and right. that's that's the the key part there is that it is all free and open to the public, um, and that's our mission is to make sure that um, things remain free. And our our we are launching a campaign, free to belong, mm-hmm. um, in that you show up as you are, you know, regardless of race, creed, religion, um, socioeconomic st- um, status. There is something at the library for you. Well, I know that I have been to a couple of the openings, mm-hmm. and and, um, uh, and certainly the every all of them are, are incredible uh, spaces. Uh, uh, let's see, the most recent one I was at was Huber Heights. I think is that the newest one? Yes, the it's newest the newest one. one. Yes, it, it is. Is that the last one? It is the last is one the last that one. finished out the ten-year um, um, uh, libraries for a smarter future campaign, mm-hmm. where 
um, the voters of Montgomery County, bless them, <laughs> uh, passed a levy, a bond uh, levy that allowed us to rebuild and um, renew, um, in some cases build from scratch, mm -hmm. uh, like the West Branch. Um, library, the Huber Heights Library, uh, Northmont. Yeah, the one the, you said, the West Branch. So that's the one on Abbey Abbey, Abbey yes, Road. Abbey it, yeah, Road. Um, yeah, I was I was there for that grand opening. Actually, actually, they had a couple of grand openings out there, I yeah, think. I but think it's a it, nice yeah. facility. They're all nice. They, mm -hmm. They're all pretty pretty similar. They're all similar in design. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you mentioned the the meeting space. Yes, uh, which is. Um, I live in Belmont, so the one there, mm -hmm. is that called the Belmont branch or the Southeast branch? Is Southeast, that what the, Southeast yes, branch? Yes, it's right next to the Belmont, to Belmont High, High School, School, where yeah. we see a large number of young people, which Isn't that is great? exciting. Isn't that great? That is fantastic, yes, yeah. and so we want to make sure we have programming for them when they come in. What's nice about that facility, or, and maybe it's this way in all of them, but I know what's nice about that facility, the, the community room or the meeting room is like, a, is it a separate space in the building, and so you can... Even when the library is closed, you can you rent can out that space and access the, that room. Yes. Yeah. And what's important for the public to know is that all of our spaces are free um, during our normal working hours. You mm -hmm. know, there's a small bit of um, of uh, a charge if you want to do something on the weekends or, or during closed hours. But all of that is free. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's wonderful. Um, and so we, I know the auditor's office is making use of that space, and we appreciate that. We. Uh, uh, this is a year where we're updating property values, mm -hmm. and again, to keeping with your mission, uh, you are helping us, hosting us at, yes. at community forums. I think it's six, six different ones, six, six different, different forums. We've mm -hmm. been had a couple already, You've but we've got two already. Uh, we've yeah. got one in Katerine and one in Vandalia. I just had one in Vandalia. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, I think the next one is coming up in. Um, Oh, I, I'm looking at my list here. New Lebanon will be in New, New Lebanon, Lebanon. Mm -hmm. on the September 25th. Then we'll be at the main library on the, the 26th, yes. which is my birthday. Oh, happy and, birthday. <laughs> uh, Northwest. Okay, that's over in the west side, over by uh, Philadelphia and uh, Philadelphia mm -hmm. and Salem on October 2nd. And back in Huber Heights then on October 24th. Again, these are community forums that the auditor's office is doing, but the library is hosting those. And yeah. again, it kind of keeps with your mission. It is. And we, we, we think it's really important that we align ourselves with, with what is happening in the community. And we provide opportunities to learn for, for community folks to learn more about what um, is happening in their communities. So when they get something like their, their tax bill or they get something um, that's coming from a, a public municipality, we want to be a resource for them to kind of find out more, dig dig a little deeper. Um, and so the fact that you're facilitating these in our in our spaces um, is just terrific. I think yeah, it, it meets both of our uh, both goals, of our missions, meets yes. both of our missions. And mm -hmm. uh, again, it's an important thing. We I, we were in Vandalia earlier, and uh, we had a standing packed room house, only. Standing room yes, only. And, I can, I, and I imagine that that's just going to get more and more as people uh, keep probably, receiving there. Probably you're going to be. In the largest uh, room possible at Maine, it'll be Maine, the yeah. Eichelberger Theater. Okay. So, so perfectly. Uh, so it's worked out great. Again, it's a nice facility. It's free parking. There's free plenty parking. of parking. Mm -hmm. uh, but and again, it's it's it reinforces the notion that the library is there to serve the community yes. and to provide uh, this, those types of resources. It's a knowledge base. It's and a it's, knowledge and base. And it's a it's mm -hmm. a. And I think people expect that. Mm -hmm. from from there um, we're a quasi governmental agency right mm -hmm. um, and so we we operate um, as a as a government institution but also as a nonprofit mm -hmm. and so um, when people are looking for information and resources they are going to look to their government mm -hmm. agencies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the library is a logical place to start sure. um, with that and so and so there like you mentioned earlier the, a levy the, the so the Dayton Metro Library has a levy mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the voters have supported Voted. and it, it provides uh, critical funding it, that's not all of the funding for the library but it's a it's a big part of it it is a big part of it and so the 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 second part of my title which is development director okay. kind of absolutely leans into that um, so the piece of our budget that doesn't get covered by levies and the um, public library, library fund, fund mm -hmm. and um, is supported by by generous donations, individuals, foundations. Um, so my role is to close that gap. Okay. Um, that that doesn't and and I think that the um, 
um, the larger community doesn't understand often that that um, the library does need funding um, in that way sure. and that mm -hmm. uh, their dollars um, donation dollars support our operations they support the robust programming that we have we have over 10,000 um, programs um, it easily in a year if you go on the website uh, datemetrolibrary.org and mm -hmm. you look under your branch or even look across you will see everything from goat yoga <laughs> <laughs> to you know how to how to fly a drone okay um, information about architecture workshops around um, workforce development writing a resume teen workshops it we run the gamut you have reading days don't you have, we reading, have reading days, days. days. we have book clubs okay um, it yeah so it we you if you think about it um, if we don't have it go to one of reference for librarian call me we can create a program around it <laughs> yes yeah, like i said it's really transitioned over the in my lifetime uh, mm -hmm. the, the technology has made a difference technology has made a huge difference like i said we have a green room also um one of the things that i i think it's really important for folks to know is they don't necessarily even have to come into the library mm -hmm. to access library services if you have a smartphone um, you can download the Libby app which with your um, library card, which is so important to get a library okay. card. Get a library card. <laughs> if you don't, I, I ask people to look in their wallet. What's the most important <laughs> card in your in your library, in your uh, wallet? Hopefully it's the library, library card. card. And okay. you can do that by going online or walking into a, a branch. So you can actually get a card online. Yes, you mm. can get a card online. And that allows you access to our digital collections, audiobooks, ebooks movies, videos, um, through, like I said, through Libby, through the Libby app, you have to download the Libby app and download the Canopy app or the Hoopla app. Mm -hmm. um, and those um, um, give you direct free, again, <laughs> access to um, movies, indie movies, movies that you won't see in, in the theater, in the um, typical theater, you might see them at the neon. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's a really wonderful resource that we, that we have moved into the digital space that way. So you've had a, a fascinating career Right, yes, a lot of different things. So. Yes. A lot of different things. You've seen the world. Yes, you've seen the world. Um, is this the most fascinating thing you've ever done? I want to say yes. Okay. And you know, I never thought I would work for a library okay. as a my. Um, well, you know, people I don't think really can appreciate or realize, like you said, I'm I'm hoping that that's part of what we're doing here is educating people about all the different services they think. Oh, you know, the, the library. Well, you know. A librarian. You're the I librarian. Instantly you get, go, yeah. Oh, you work for the library. You're a librarian. librarian. And I said, no, I'm one of the few people that works for the library that's not, not a, a librarian. librarian. Yeah. Um, and so to to be able to um, bring community into in into to establish partnerships, um, to elevate the roles of, of the really important role um, in of the in of the library and um, civic engagement. Um, it's that's all part of of my educational background, my mm -hmm. arts background. Um, it's just a great, it's just a great fit great for match. you. A great, great fit for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I just love our patrons. I love the questions that we get. I love our librarians. They are our children's libraries. You probably have frequent libraries. flyers. You probably have frequent flyers. We have frequent flyers. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We have the most creative staff um, that I can imagine. The, 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 the thought process around what they bring and like I mentioned goat yoga <laughs> yeah. you know and, mm -hmm. and um, what they bring I've seen goat yoga, goat yoga. It? it's fascinating okay, so you're going to sign up for a class we'll probably see you, we'll see not you at... probably not but, but I have seen it done. I've seen <laughs> it done next... it's fascinating it's yes, fascinating yes, yeah. I don't know that I want to go yeah. jumping on goat, me but... <laughs> crawling around on me I don't know they're cute they're they cute. are they're adorable I love going to the fair and seeing the goats ah, but yes, anyway yes. Um, so you have 17 branches. 17. How important is that, do you think, in order to reach out into the community and it's actually key. be places, be be in those places? It's key. Um, so we are um, urban. Mm -hmm. We are suburban. Sure. And we are rural. Like you um, indicated earlier, Montgomery County is large. Yep. And so we have, we occupy spaces in, in those. And it's so important because people need to access information in their community. Mm -hmm. And so whereas each um, um, 
facility might look the same on the outside. On the inside, they are they are reflections of the communities in which they sit. Some of the services are a little bit different. Some of the services are different depending on the uh, the community in which, is it, like we talked about, um, Belmont has a large teen population. Mm. So you'll see a. You're right there by the high school. Right yes. there by the high school. Mm. So you'll see a very robust um, teen programming, and some of our rural, um, you'll see a little bit different um, mm -hmm. programming. Some things that that. Um, deal a lot with um, rural issues, maybe a, a lot more farming and, and gardening um, um, programming, workshops. Um, at Maine, uh, you might see a lot more arts and culture mm -hmm. um, programming, but we try and make sure that all of our programming gets out. We don't want to pigeonhole, sure. you know, sure. communities, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that 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 there's equal access. So, some program. areas in the community, uh, uh, this is an issue, I think, of, uh, in some areas, is the, some of the immigrant pop population. Mm -hmm. You want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, we the, we are very excited about our new newest Americans uh, mm -hmm. program. For the longest, we were um, doing newest the, Americans rather than immigrants, right? Newest right. Americans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have a large newest Americans collection of reading material in several different languages. Mm -hmm. um, we have our newest Americans uh, manager, program manager, Gabriella, um, and she really works within these communities to make sure folks are getting connected to um, resources such as schools, um, it, making sure that, that uh, families know how to enroll in the school system, access health care, access their government agencies, access help them the read auditor's their, office. Uh, exactly, <laughs> access the auditor's office. And so our newest Americans manager um, helps steward people through that process. We were doing the naturalization okay. um, ceremonies in our facilities, and that was oh, a nice. beautiful, yes. beautiful yeah. day. Mm -hmm. um, you would see families, large families coming in, tears, you know, this is something that they had been aspiring to for a very long time. So it was beautiful to, to have that ceremony in our facility. You, uh, I, at Maine. Uh, the, the, yeah, that was at Maine. Mm -hmm. um, I knew this, and, and I've heard people talk about this, and, and you were, the library really inspired us to, to do something that we'd never done before. So we, you know, always during a uh, update when we're doing property value update we always have brochures and printed mm -hmm. materials well uh, I think it was after we were at the Huber Heights location we decided to um, have those materials translated into a variety of languages so it's we've got some things in, in French and in Spanish and in Russian and mm -hmm. uh, Arabic and, and you, you inspired Rwanda. us to do Thank that you. you inspired us to do that it's Thank how important you. that is to, to, to reach out to those folks and to, to people who um, you know, there's a language barrier there, mm -hmm. and so it, it kind of keeps them from accessing some of the services that they. So again, the library just does a wonderful job. And we want to so many fronts, so many fronts. We want to diminish as many barriers mm -hmm. to access to information as possible. Well, this has been, and I knew it would be. This has been fascinating. I knew it would have a great conversation, Debbie. Thank so you. much, so I've been, been so impressed with you. Thank so happy you. to have you back in our community. Thank you. It's great to be back. Um, and uh, thanks so much of the Dayton Metro Library and those, and all the libraries and the services they provide and the work that you do. So thank you so much, and thank you for being my guest today. I appreciate it. Absolutely, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, so that's going to wrap up uh, our this episode of Odds and Ends, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.